Titus chapter 1 describes these false prophets similarly uh, of why they preach what they preach. Titus chapter 1 verse number 10, the Bible says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, that's talking about the Jews, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, look at this last phrase, for filthy lucre's sake. So there's plenty of people out there, and they're saying, he's saying here, even specifically, or excuse me, not specific, especially, you know, especially those of the circumcision, you know, the Jews were at the time, especially, you know, they were, you know, um, the vain talkers and deceivers are deceiving the people. They're, they're antichrist. They're saying that Christ hasn't come. And they would teach things that they ought not, things that are not true, damnable heresies, it says, but why did they teach them? Why would they teach these things? For filthy lucre's sake, for money. That's what lucre is just money. They would do it just for the money's sake, just because they want people to give them money. So we see here again another um, reference to these vain talkers and deceivers, people who are deceitful, just trying to say whatever they can for filthy, filthy lucre's sake. Again, they're making merchandise of the people. And this is why the Bible has the, the qualifications for a pastor that they should not be greedy, right? They should not love money. They should not be uh, greedy of filthy lucre. The Bible uses this exact same term there about filthy lucre. It should have nothing to do with the money because it's not about the money. Now, the money is going to come in. It needs to come in. You know, we believe in, in paying tithes. The tithe belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the pastor. It doesn't belong to the preacher. The tithe belongs to God. The money that comes into the church, the offerings, the tithes, whatever, whatever comes in, whatever people are going to put in the plate, that money all belongs to God. It's for the service of the Lord. That's the whole point of it. So you can't have somebody that's going to be managing things and running things here in the church who's going to want to have that money and, and be desirous and covetous of that money. Now, again, the Bible teaches that, you know, the laborer is worthy of his reward, that it's totally fine and acceptable and prudent and, and appropriate for people who are ministering in the Lord's house to be compensated, to be paid, to be able to, to be supplied and supported in the work that they're doing, you know, as far as a carnal sense is, when it comes to the money, when it comes to being fed, when it comes to having a place to live, that stuff is, is, it's totally appropriate to be taken care of, but that's not the purpose why you take the job of being a pastor. It's not like, oh man, I want this great paying job. It's because you want to do the work, because you want to serve God. That's the whole point, because there is a problem, and that's why it's so important that when a person is ordained and selected to pastor a church, that you can make sure that they're not that type of person when they get ordained, because uh, if, there's, if there's signs of covetousness, specifically being in a position of pastoring a church, you know, it, as the church grows, you're going to come through, you know, your hands can get on a lot of money. money. A lot of money does come into churches. Now, we don't have like tons of money or whatever, but there's an opportunity there for, uh, one, for theft and for, for that covetousness and misuse of of using the, the God's money ultimately. But the other problem, I think it's, I think it's even a bigger problem because if someone's not covetous, obviously, um, that's great. But the, um, the problem is when people start changing their message and not preaching the word of God because they want more money to come in. And that's going to prevent the preacher from preaching what he needs to preach. Right? If, you're, if you're supposed to be instant, in season, out of season, rebu reprove, rebuke, or exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, you know, that's what you're supposed to be doing as a preacher. But then you realize, well, wait, if I say this, these people might leave. This person might not come back to church. This, I know that they're guilty of this, so if I say something about this, they might get offended and leave, and then they're not going to keep putting that money in the plate. And unfortunately, pastors will put themselves in these situations without even realizing it when they go into debt as a church. And that's something that we're not going to do because I don't want to be holding to anybody's purse strings ever. We need to just preach, preach the Bible, preach the word of God. And hey, you know what? If it offends people and they end up leaving, well, then that's their prerogative. But we're never, I'm never going to change anything that I'm going to preach because someone with money might leave. 
And that's the way it needs to be. And that's the way it needs to be in the church. But see, the false prophets, they don't care about that. They have no, they have no consideration for the word of God whatsoever. It's all just a means to an end. 